we went to a weed man house trying to get some weed from him. we was driving off but this time it was like hold on i think he then he turned around like you know what i'm saying he, he following us hit the gas running red lights on the wrong side of the lane like we could have got stopped by the police we could have got to an accident like anything could happen and all of a sudden like five a shot go off hits the right rear view mirror of the car as soon as it hit that everybody just duck two more shots when i foul foul catch us if you can't catch too late boy we out of oh, here had to take a stand oh, yeah. Man, when did this become a thing? Um, I would say like five years old. My folks were strict, so it's like they wouldn't let me listen to certain music. So I had to sneak like on BT, MTV, you know what I'm saying? Just look and see what was going on, cause I was just I was just curious. I, I grew up in an era where hip hop was starting to evolve and starting to get big, and as the South was coming up, I just respect the whole craft and the whole culture what was going on so i was like i always mesmerized i'm talking about elementary school we had the lunch table rapping like so and when i hit high school like i'm actually in the studio recording songs not kingdom songs but but i still wasn't cussing though because my folks used to listen to my music too i love music like it's, i just knew it was in me my mom had a drug addiction like every sunday she drug us to church you feel me? <laughs> so we had to go to church, bro. We had to be there Sunday, Wednesday, car rehearsal, all that. I used to love going to church, boy. Church used to be lit, like for real. Like, he used to be in the choir and everything. <laughs> they used to have like a whole bunch of stuff, like for the youth. When you was in church, that's what it was. Everybody just come together as one and just had fun. And that's why I loved it so much because right when you came, they weren't really about judging. It was open arms. I would definitely say I got a lot of my character from my church home because they definitely taught me how to be a real genuine person and show love. Show love, show love, show love. Say! Show love, show love, show love. One more time. Show love, show love, show love. Say! I wouldn't say I was like a bad kid. I just like to have fun and stuff. And I just got into a lot of things that I didn't really have to get into. When you hit middle school, you get introduced to games, sex, drugs, like all that. It was just all coming at me at once. That's when like my eyes opened up to the real world, quote unquote. Some stuff was fun. Like, oh, skipping class. Boy, we used to always skip class. We used to fight for fun. And that was stupid. Like, we used to go on busted lips. That, that's just what was going on back then. If you ain't do what was going on, you was considered an outsider. I got a bone to pick. We got a street to fix. Made it from sticks and stones. Made it from sticks and stones. Yeah, I got a point to make. I was in the mix of like all of that. Kicking in houses, like selling weed. I was coming from a two-parent household. A lot of my friends, their dad left them. And they knew that. Like they knew I didn't have to do like what they did and that I didn't have to carry myself the way I cared. They cared themselves. But um, I just chose to. I was just ignorant. I don't want to say run with the wrong crowd, it was because it was kind of like, like we was all together. They also knew I had a passion for music. They always used to tell me, like, you gonna be the ticket out, like you gonna be the way out. They looked out for me. Just the other day, y'all was reminiscing about the bad times and the good times that we had. A lot of situations went left our man, I ain't never going outside. 2013, like, that's when everything like just kind of made a 360. I was in college. You know, in college, like, it's a struggle. So my main thing in college, I was trying to get some money. I just figured out any little thing I can do, like, to get money. One incident, we went to a weed man house trying to get some weed from him. We got about, it was like $80 a weed or something like that. This wasn't the first time we did it. Usually we did it, we go away and, and it is what it is. But this time, it was like, we was uh, driving off. And I'll never forget, like, my cousin in the front seat, like, he was like, hold on, man, I think he, he following us, so we going to hit the gas, we running red lights, and all of a sudden, like, fah, a shot go off, hits the right rear view mirror of the car. As soon as it hit that, everybody just ducked. We driving real crazy now. Two more shots went out, fah, fah, whole back window came out. We driving crazy, like, we finally get to our destination. We look, make sure, like, the coast clear or whatever, so I got out. When I tell you I fell to my knees so fast, bro, like, something came over me that day. My whole body was numb, bro. I fell straight to my knees, like, just telling God, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Cause I just knew if I kept going, I would either end up dead or in jail. Still 
can kick a flavor, you can even tell from my grandma. Had to change my life, cause I was on the way to that slammer. Yeah. I just didn't, I didn't want that. I knew what I wanted in life. I knew that I wanted to be successful. I knew that I wanted a family. I knew I wanted to be a leader and an example to others. I knew that I always wanted to bring light to people's you know what I'm saying, situations and just inspire and motivate. Like, I always wanted to do that. I grew up in church all my life. I knew what it was. I knew what, you know what I'm saying, being a Christian was. Like, I knew it, but I didn't really live it. You feel me? Like, I feel like it's different between just saying that you're a Christian and actually having a relationship. I tell people, like, with me, it's relationship over religion. No matter what day it is, no matter where I'm at, I'm a child of God, period. And that day, I actually built a relationship. I transformed my music as well. I wasn't talking about nothing before anyway. When that happened, I, I feel like I had something to talk about, and I feel like I had to just start, like, speaking on what I knew. I just wanted people to listen to my music and get fed, like, other than just listening to it, just to get a vibe. Jesus, when I need some advice, gotta listen, he ain't telling you twice. I'ma take a chance, shaking the dice, head to heaven, cause it gotta be nice. I'ma keep it up forever. I was literally lost. I knew I wanted to have a future, but I literally didn't know, like, what it held for me. Like, I told my folks that I didn't want to go to college. For me, in my mind, like, it was crunch time. Like, it was like, all right, if I'm not going to go to school, I got to do something. Like, I got to put my mind to something. I got to put my all into something. Sometimes I would just try to see what other folks had going on. Like, hmm, do I want to do that? But I realized that I had to, like, have my own mindset and think for myself and find out what I really love and what I'm passionate about. Two things I'm passionate about is making people feel good and music. So it just came over me. I like literally start going 100% with the music, like treating it like a nine to five. I wasn't getting paid for it, but I was treating it like a nine to five. Recording every day, putting music out, doing shows, like not paid shows, but anywhere I can get my face. I just had a crazy hustle. I linked up with my boy Antonio. His mentor, his big brother, was a guy by the name of Kent Jones. Me and him, we just linked up, started hanging out, got real cool with each other. It was like a uh, like a showcase he had once a month or something like that. So I came out to that and um, I just went crazy. I performed one of my songs and just gave it my all. He came to me after the show, like, you should, you know what I'm saying, come back next week, come back next week. He took me on his wing and just was my mentor. He was starting to do a church too, Free Life Church. Free Life is like a hip hop church. So it's like Praise and Worship is like a rap concert or whatever. So I used to lead Praise and Worship all the time, like with my songs. People would start coming and like see my face more. And me and my brother Tony O, we came up with a song called Church Going Wild. That was a real big local church song. Even blew up out of state. Got 200,000 on YouTube. Church Going Wild, Church Going Wild, Church Going Wild, Church Going Wild. The Atlanta producer Zay Tovin, man, he took me under his wings. He just been helping me out and pouring into me. That's one of, another one of my big mentors. One day, uh, Biz, the head engineer at Reach, I seen he had followed me. You know, I'm knowing who Reach Records is, so I'm like, oh, I let me follow back or DM him or something. I was like, hey, what's up, man? Um, I just want to introduce myself. I'm few. So I just started throwing names. <laughs> like I got a lot of they told beats. Where we can Jones. I got Metro Boom beats. And I was just like, man, I would just love like come and just vibe out or something. So he was like, you know what? What are you doing today? So I'm like, yo, I'm not doing nothing. So he was like, could you come to the studio? I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I don't got no car or nothing at the time. I'm calling my whole car log. Bro, I need a ride. I need a ride. <laughs> Reese is like 45 minutes from the house. I got there in less than an hour. Cinematic when I pen and pat it. Holy war, I don't even panic. Holy water, I don't need a panic. Yeah, and I'm not stressing. I knew like once I got up there that I was just going, I was going to give it my all. I was going to give it my best. My main mission was to just get in their face. Like just to let them see that I'm really like living what I'm talking about. I get there, a guy by the name of Jeremy, that's the first person I see. So I go in the studio with him. In that room, he has like a lot of beats, like a whole catalog of Zaytoven beats, Metro Booming beats. So. I started laying just hooks down to him. The very first hook I did was to a song called Hammer Time. And then Jeremy was like, bro, like, this is hard. Like, this is fire. Man, I gotta go get Cray. So he, like, I didn't even know Cray was there. So he got out of the room. He went to go get Cray. Next thing I knew, I see this big seven foot dude walk in the room. I see Cray walk in the room. I'm like, yo, what's up, bro? Like, it was, like, it was crazy. Boy, you looking at a headline. Hammer Time. They can't touch me, Hammer Time. Me and him was just 
was chopping it up and he, I let him listen to the song. He was like, yo, this is hard. And after that, he was like, man, I got to put this on my album. And then like in my head, I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. I done heard that a million times. Probably like a couple days later, he had sent the split sheet. I'm like, oh, he about to put it on the album. <laughs> and probably like the week after he came up to me, he was like, man, I think we're going to put Hammer Time as a single. So again, I was like, man, I done heard that too. <laughs> When Hammer Time dropped, boy, that's like top five greatest feelings ever, boy. Like, I remember that like yesterday. That was my first time going to LA. BT weekend. And we went to Diddy House. Crazy, like, dream. But the whole time, Craig was telling me, like, this is a dream. Don't get sucked up in it. This is just a dream. I appreciated that. One thing about Craig, like, he always kept his word. One of the biggest things I think he done poured into me was, don't be scared to show people who you are. Don't be scared to tell your story. That's one thing I definitely took in consideration with my music. And I've definitely been giving more of me and more of my message in my music lately. Me and Cray used to, you know what I'm saying? We would talk like outside of music. Tadashi, me and Tadashi would chop it up. Me and Biz, like the whole Rich Records camp, like I get good vibes from everybody. They always pour into me, like they want to see me do good. And they can easily, be like, nah, I'm not about to help you. Like, I'm not about to give you the sauce or the recipe on how I got to where I am. But nah, like, they like real mentors and really like want to see us win. Getting up the reach, like that was that was crazy. Like it was, that was definitely a God thing. Like definitely. Ain't no sunshine when you go. Me and my girl, we've been we've been together since 11th grade. We had so much love for each other and stuff like that. So, got caught up one time and one time turned two time, two time turned three time, and third time journey. We had journey 2016. I'll never forget when I found out like my girl's pregnant. I went straight to my sister. Like, man, I got something to tell you, and she already knew. She just talked to us like, telling us like, y'all gonna get flat from it because y'all not married. And you know what mommy gonna say, like that was she talking, like you know it, you know it. So brought it to my parents, she brought it to her parents. That was heated. We all just sat down. They just asked us, is that what we really wanna do? I was definitely going back and forth in my head. Cause I already don't believe in abortions, but I'm like, dang, like I am young. Should I even be doing this? I just kept praying on it and like, I honestly feel like we did the right thing. It was meant to be. I'm proud of my girl, cause she's super strong. Just for having my back and always vouching for me like when my music wasn't doing that. Just, she always just been there. I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful just to have somebody like her in my corner. And I can't wait for us to get married and get our own spot. We did it. I knew we could. Everything's on God's time. Even when you think you're ready, God still got some more obstacles and tests for you to go to. Like, let me see if you're really ready. But I feel like some people like ask God for things that they're not even passionate about. If you ask God for something, he's gonna give it to you if he sees that you really want it. People gotta learn how to do the work too. Cause they so quick to blame God. I, I've been praying to God, I still ain't got what I want. And it's just like, cause you, you're not practicing your, your gift. You gotta step out on faith and do it. If God sees your heart and he sees that you're willing to try, like he'll give you that extra boost. I want to let people know, especially my generation, that we kings and queens. We run our era, you feel me? Like we make what you know I'm saying, our generation is. All you gotta do is just stay true to who you are and be yourself and don't settle. You gotta do what God called you to do. Be who God made you to be, period. We did it. Yeah, man, it's your boy 1K Few. Y'all already know what's going on you are watching. This is me TV. Let's get it. I knew we could. Hey, guess what? We did it. I'm feeling good. It's time to get it. And feed the hood. Oh yeah, we did it. I knew we could. Yo. Nah, for real. Yo. Holy. Huh. I told
told my mama we gon' get a couple bands. I'm out here working while you posting on the ground. I don't need no.